right if loving you is wrong fans now it's only been like 48 hours but i finally did it i sat down i watched down I, excuse me i've watched the episode of first date the episode i've watched the entire thing so i have my notes down I have my trailer breakdown notes, so in this setting, I'm going to do my episode review, my trailer breakdown, and probably three to four other If Loving You Is Wrong videos. So once I get these done, I might actually be free to do my have and have not stuff. So Ian and Alex have taken this channel by storm. A few weeks ago, it was Derek and the Tattoo, but everybody has shifted gears to Ian and um, Jennifer, but... Let's talk about the episode itself. Now, off the cuff, 8 out of 10. I don't know. Maybe it's because I did all those Ian, Alex videos first. So when I watched the episode in its entirety, I was more hyped for what's to come next week than the episode that came on Tuesday night. Now, it wasn't a bad episode. That's not it at all. I think 8 out of 10 is a, a good score. I just think that... Oh, sorry. Chair squeaking here. I, I just think the trailer for next week truly hyped things up. And from my perspective, guys, and I've said this time and time again, you know, when Own releases those video clips, like the minute clip, the 38-second clip, and then, like, three other 15-second clips on their Instagram account... I do videos on those clips depending on how much information we get and do theories off of that. So when the episode comes and usually I'm right, a lot of the surprise factor is gone. So I really predicted everything like, you know, the doctor coming over to results at the end of the episode and things like that. So it was a well-structured episode, but let's just talk about it. Um, Lucian's outside of the room uh, expecting Kelly's gone and sent she was there when the DA and the cops went in, then we can just assume that Kelly went to the bathroom in the room, made it back, and handcuffed herself to the hospital bed. Did she do that herself? I mean, I, I mean, obviously she did since she was the only one in the room. And then the DA said that Lucian needs to go in because they don't have the right key. Um, so did Kelly, Kelly didn't want to be handcuffed, remember? So did she go to the bathroom and then make it back under the bed sheets before the two policemen came in? Because if she did and she was in a position that Lucian told her to be in, which was, can you cover your hands to make it seem like you're under the sheet? That way they don't know you're not handcuffed. Unless it was a situation where Kelly had her hands underneath the sheets, but the other end of the handcuffs were on the bed. So when the cops tried to unlock the handcuffs, oh no, our key doesn't work. Lucia needs to come in and uncuff her. So when... Lucian went in to uncuff her. He pretended to unlock cuffs that weren't attached to her hands. I'm not docking points for that, but it just seemed a bit off to me. But I think I'm dragging on on something that really doesn't matter. Whatever. So from there, um, you know, Kelly's in dismay because she doesn't want to go back to jail. But, you know, they'll try to set up a call with justice. And that's about it. The DA and Lucian have words. And really, it's just her wanting to be reelected. So why? Go against the populace when I can, you know, get reelected for just the sake of one woman who isn't going to jail for prison for life. I mean, the DA wants freaking death penalty. And let's be honest here. I don't think it's going to go that far. So then after that, Esperanza's meeting with Larry and Esperanza's being Esperanza. I mean, she wants to threaten Eddie, but not reveal any of the dirt that could threaten him. Because she doesn't want to ruin his life. Because, I mean, if I were Larry, that's kind of like, well, um, what am I supposed to do? No restraining order, no sexual harassment. What exactly do you want me to do? And pretty much, you know, they reveal like, oh, we got a common enemy here. So what they would do from there is um, just try to take away, oh, excuse me, uh, just try to take away custody of the daughter. And that's pretty much it. And the whole thing about, you know, can you hire someone to kill him was quote unquote a joke. But yeah, 
So yeah, Esperanza just kind of wasting time there until he brought up the daughter thing. Like literally, you walked into the office of a lawyer, and it's kind of like it, it's kind of like you know she went to a teacher to tattletale on a boy that's been messing with her in class, but instead of either mentioning the name of the student or it, saying exactly what the bully did, you're kind of just wasting your time and theirs. But eventually, the whole daughter thing came into play. Uh, Randall calls Marcy. Not much to say here. I, I just feel like I don't know why these people don't either block Randall's number or change their own phone number. I really have nothing else to say on that. Uh, then she's talking with Brad. 7 p.m. Let's go on dinner. That'll be our first date. Uh, Tanya and Bennett talk. And this is actually uh, one of my favorite parts of the episode, believe it or not, just because we get more backstory on the two. And at first, when we first met the two, it seemed to me like Tanya was the one that wanted them to move from their previous building or neighborhood because Bennett had a knack for getting involved with the affairs. Not, you know, when I say affairs, I mean like troubles and whatnot of the other neighbors because being a fireman, he wants to help others. And because he got way too involved, those two got involved in way too much craziness. So they decided to move. But it turns out that the reason and most likely the reason they moved is because Tanya had a few episodes, if you will, in her previous location, causing people to stare at her funny. And I mean, literally, if some if your if your neighbor was in the middle of the street at night screaming and butt naked, and then the next day doesn't remember anything, why why the hell wouldn't they look at you weird? So we we know that or well we don't know for sure, but it seems very likely that Tanya was the reason they moved away. Bennett doing what he could to make his wife comfortable by just going to a new location. But yeah, I, I'm willing to bet Tanya was the one that really triggered things, if you will. Um, then we learned that she wants a baby, but Bennett, I wouldn't say Bennett is fully against having a child. He literally says that. It's just that you need to take your medication or you'll continue to have those episodes. But Tanya's like, if I take the pills, I can't have a baby. So yeah, it's very interesting. And then from there, um, it, it's pretty much a situation where she talks about the doctor across the street. I don't want to talk to him anymore. And, um, Marcy and Natalie talk briefly, just catching up on what's been going on with the two talking about Kelly. And it's funny how Lucian says, I'll kill a bitch to protect him too. Re referring to Lucian. I think that's a pretty interesting line of dialogue. We shouldn't forget. Um, Brad comes into the office, takes her away for dinner. So th we'll see that in the next episode. Natalie approaches, um, <laughs> Randall is like, hey, ah, uh. and once again, I did a clip on this. They go back and forth, pretty much a situation where I want to tell that you're just, you know, looking into his wife's house with those binoculars, and it's like, get in the house. No, man, get off my lawn, you hood rat, and then from there, Esperanza approaches Eddie. Hey, in two hours, let's go to a restaurant to talk. Uh, Benny asks Randall not to talk to Tanya again. Sure, whatever, nice guy. Then he's pissed off and goes to Alex's house. And I've done plenty of videos on this already, so not really to harp on it. Alex wants to set some ground rules, then asks for a retest. Then Randall is like, if I'm not the father of that baby, oh, wait, oh, yeah, you think I've done stuff now? It's on, it's on. And then they go upstairs. Uh, then they're at lunch, you know, Esperanza and Eddie. And this probably was one of those scenes where I liked Esperanza because she was actually coming across as, look, here's how things are going. Eddie, you're an asshole. And then Eddie was just being Eddie. And I'm not an, I don't know how, I'm going to be honest here. I've been to restaurants, but I don't really go to restaurants that often. So when the guy came up and said that, you know, oh, it's okay. She comes here all the time. Wouldn't it have been different if he would have said, oh, uh, Miss Esperanza, we'll just put that on your tab. And if that were the case, would that mean Esperanza wouldn't be arrested for dying and dash? Because I, I get it. Like people forget their wallets and stuff like that. But I think that was a odd choice of plot just to force her going to jail. I think that was a bit extreme. I don't think that. If anything, it just made her look airheaded. And I really don't want to talk bad about Esperanza in this scene because, once again, I think she did really well in this scene. Uh, pretty much saying, you know, Eddie, th this is ridiculous because Eddie pretty much said that he put on a nice guy at just to get Esperanza. But once he got her, you know, hey, I, you know, for a lack of a better phrase, came out of the closet. So I'm really the asshole I've always been. You just didn't know it. So... 
Yeah, I mean, that's Ronza was owning the scene, you know, talking about the sole custody of the daughter. Here's all the dirt I have on you. And if you don't leave me and whoever I want to date alone, then this is what's going to happen. So she was, yeah, I think for not having the wallet really weakened her character. Like, I was Team Esperanza in that scene until the whole I forgot my wallet. Like, Eddie was just being Eddie. It was funny, but... I just hate it that that's why Esperanza got arrested. Like, I would have been aboard with the whole, oh, okay, you're slapping an officer on duty. But then again, was he really on duty if he was on break at the restaurant too? So that's why I thought she would get arrested. But no, Dine and Dash. That's weird. Because once again, the owner of the establishment, I'm guessing he's the owner. Well, then again, he does work at the bar. So I, I don't know how that would have worked. But I don't know if that's exactly how it would have went down. But you know what? I don't want to harp on this too long. But... Basically, she's arrested. Then, once again, I've talked about this. The doctor comes over with the results. Alex is shocked. For whatever reason, she hasn't. So, was she ducking and dodging the doctor's phone calls? Like, literally, what, what has Alex been doing What that would warn her not answering the phone? Like, literally, I mean, she was outside standing with Natalie at the bus stop. Then Brad came over with the divorce papers and Randall came over. And in none of those, unless her phone was in another part of the house or something, but I don't know, whatever. So, uh, yeah, guys, with that being said, 8 out of 10, I think it was a decent episode, not great, but it wasn't bad. I think that we're definitely getting set up for what's to come, and the trailer itself for next week looks great. I mean, but then again, you know, these trailers can be misleading based off the fact that there are scenes in the trailers that might not be in the episode. So there we go. But with that being said, 8 out of 10, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always, if you have not done so already, and guys, if you haven't, please do hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification icon. That way you don't miss out on any updates on the channel. Uh, we are closing in um, 74,000 subscribers. I mean, at 12.30 a.m., we hit 73 and as the day went on, we got a couple hundred more subscribers, so I'm very pleased with that. And I am so glad that I decided to jump aboard if loving you was wrong. So this gives me even more confidence this fall to review Greenleaf on a regular basis. Congratulations on making it to the end of this video. If you like what you just saw, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. Or if you have anything you would like to add to the video, make sure to leave your thoughts in the comment section below. If you want to keep up with me on social media, go to the description box. All of my links for social media are right there. Also, if you feel like you would like to donate to the channel, make sure to click on the link to PayPal. Any amount helps, a dollar, five dollars, twenty dollars. As a full-time YouTuber, any support from my fans really does mean a lot to me. Finally, make sure to hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification icon. That way you're kept up to date on any new content I post to the channel. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll talk to you in the next video.